Actually, it was a really interesting morning. We discussed things that were happening with evolution of current technologies. We were talking about IoT, privacy considerations, regulatory requirements around hardware and software, and we were also talking about quantum technologies. Honestly, the biggest area that I think requires standardization now in order to get ready for 2020 are things around IoT security. Because of the diversity of protocols, hardware and software manufacturers are very much coming up with it themselves and tend to create very much embedded devices where interoperability is not the only issue, but security becomes a major problem. So I think in terms of a regulatory perspective, we must act now if we want to examine you know, how to get a, a secure uh, IoT future and things like quantum quantum uh, computing and quantum cryptography and post-quantum cryptography are going to require standardization, but because they're so uh, evolutionary in terms of our way of thinking from where we are now, I really think that first we need to make sure that the regulators and the policymakers understand what it is before they try to start creating standards for it too quickly. Well, the, the biggest opportunity is this uh, amazing computing power that's going to be our, at our disposal to do things like, you know, do simulation of, uh, uh, of things that we'd like to experiment with in science, but can't do that. I think those kinds of things will be really revolutionary, but also the current uh, way that we're looking at quantum computing is to look at, well, uh, if we have a quantum computer now, the types of algorithms we're ready to run will be uh, able to break asymmetric cryptography. So we're looking at having um, uh, methods to prevent that by looking at uh, quantum key distribution and post-quantum cryptography as the response to that threat. And I don't think that we are at a place where we've actually addressed all of the opportunities and threats, but those are the most current and topical ones. But I I'm really hoping that we can look at quantum computing from, wouldn't it be amazing if we had that, that we could think of all these revolutionary interstellar travel-like applications for it and for uh, quantum key distribution and post-quantum uh, cryptographic algorithms that we require that we have a larger, wider scientific and academic community working on those problems. I think there are three things that I'd really like us all to do as a community. Uh, KPN has certainly started with this as a telco herself. Uh, the first and foremost thing to address the quantum computing challenges is to actually have uh, a way to look at your current ciphering suites, increase the key length on the current algorithms that you use. Everybody recommends this and I believe that this is the first thing you can do. Just make your key sizes larger. It actually will help. The second thing you can do is examine key critical points in your network and on those critical points implement quantum key distribution between those areas and that will actually help have you know forward secrecy for those uh, types of communications. The third thing that you should be doing is, if we know that we're addressing the first two, there are uh, currently available lattice-based cryptography which would constitute a post-quantum uh, computing algorithm suite, and there are ways to start trying those out. Vendors and, and manufacturers can start implementing them. You can work together with projects that are trying to encourage their use and adoption. So there's a lot to be done, but th that three-step method will take you from today to tomorrow. Actually, I think it's a fascinating area because, again, here we have this with artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, with analytics and big data. There are so many opportunities that I can see how it could actually make the world a much better and actually even more secure place. But what I am concerned with is that we haven't actually fully considered the ramifications on privacy. Uh, I think we are going to have to start doing that uh, now. But at KPN, we're looking more at AI from an opportunity perspective than a threat perspective at the moment.